Hey guys, KYT here with another video, and I'll be honest, I've, I've really been trying to make weekly videos, but it, it's actually really hard being a new dad. But the subscriber count and the comment section really gets me going, so if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. In this video, we're gonna address a topic that I've seen in a lot of recent videos on YouTube, which is how many stocks should you have in your portfolio? This is a good question, and because I wanna keep it short, at least this video, this might take multiple videos to answer. In this one, I'm gonna focus on why we have 9,625 stocks. That's right, that's how much there is in the XCQT ETF. Actually, I said it wrong, 9,600. 28. Now, it, it's normal for people to think that's a lot or too much when you have other people that think five is enough. Why five stocks? Because I believe it's honestly the perfect amount of diversification. I believe if you have any more than 10 stocks, it's too much because then you start not believing in stock number 17 or stock number 12 as stock number three. It's too much at that point. And that's why it doesn't surprise me when I watched a YouTuber trying to break down the VQT ETF and react the way that he did. The number of stocks, is that right? 13,511, okay. So automatically I'm, I'm already not a fan of this. Uh, and the reason why, just think about it, 13,511 stocks in a portfolio. Who manages this? Who has the ability to manage all these companies I think his reaction makes sense. And some of you who are invested in XEQT, maybe because you've watched a lot of my videos, might have that question yourself. Like, why would you want 9,000 or 11,000 stocks in your portfolio? So to me, it boils down to two different schools of thought. On one side, you have people that think that they can stock pick, that they can analyze different companies and gain an edge over the market, you know, perform better than the market. Like if, if you cared about performance and you didn't care about outperforming the market, then you should just buy one of these market index ETFs. But I've always maintained if you believe you can beat the market, who am I to tell you that you can't? Now, because stock breakers think they can gain an edge by studying the companies, that's why they often preach stuff like invest in what you know, you have to understand the companies you invest your money in, things like that. So that's why they invest in sometimes five, 20 to 30 stocks. They focus on companies that they can understand. And for them to see people like me invest in 9,000 stocks, it's like, how could I possibly understand even a fraction of those companies? That's where the second approach comes in, the second school of thought. And it's because you don't need to understand what these companies are doing. When I'm investing, in XEQT and I and I'm planning to for a long time, I'm not investing in, I don't view it at least, that I'm investing in all these different companies. I'm making a bet. I'm making a bet that the global economy will grow over time. It's also an approach and bet that's backed by academic research. In his paper, Do Stocks Outperform Treasury Bills? Hendrik Vessenbinder evaluate lifetime returns to every U.S. common stock traded on the New York and American stock exchanges and the NASDAQ since 1926. If we jump to the conclusion, he mentions that slightly more than 4% of the firms account for all of the net stock market gains. The results in this paper imply that the returns to active stock selection can be very large if the investor is either fortunate or skilled enough to select a concentrated portfolio containing stocks that go on to earn extreme positive returns. Of course, the key question of whether an investor can reliably identify in advance such home run stocks or can identify a manager with the skill to do so remains. So to summarize, there's been a lot of stocks over this time period and only a very small percentage of them did really well. And that helps sort of explain the XEQT approach. You're not trying to guess what those stocks are. You're trying to get as much exposure as possible so that your portfolio contains some number of these high performing stocks. What's even more interesting is in a more recent paper in 2020, Wealth Creation in the US Public Stock Markets, 1926 to 2019, once again by Hendrik Bessenbinder, 
he finds that the degree to which stock market wealth creation is concentrated in a few top performing firms has increased over time and was particularly strong during the most recent three years when five firms accounted for 22% of net wealth creation. These results should be of interest to any long-term investor assessing the relative merits of broad diversification versus narrow portfolio selection. And if we jump to his conclusion, all investors should be aware of the fact that long-term stock market wealth creation has historically been concentrated in a few firms and that the degree of concentration has increased in recent years. There is no reason to think that wealth creation outcomes will not be also be highly concentrated in the future. What that really means is that it's projected that less and less stocks are going to explain the total return of the market. And, you know, one has to wonder why that is. And According to the paper, this increased degree of concentration in SWC, which is shareholder wealth creation, outcomes in recent years is consistent with the prediction of No and Parker 2005 that the internet-based economy has contributed to more winner-take-all outcomes. I'll provide links to these papers in the video description below, but I hope it now makes sense. I mean, I had a friend question the strategy, think ETFs are just wrong or they're they're for people that don't know what they're doing well you know what brah i know exactly what i'm doing and why i'm employing the strategy and why i have over nine thousand stocks in my portfolio and why i don't need to understand what they are doing and i hope those of you who are with me on this journey have a bit more clarity in your strategy as well and so hopefully i'll see you in the next one and i hope that's sometime soon See you for now.